Hello, welcome to another Open Geospatial tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do tree mapping using uh, segment geospatial and also the segment anything too. First, let me show you what it looks like. So we're going to use uh, a set of imagery or area imagery, and we can do uh, tree mapping automatically using um, putting a bounding boxes. Or you can use an existing uh, vector file that uh, contains the bounding boxes. Trees. Those bounding boxes you can get from uh, other data sources or you can get from uh, the output of other deep learning models. And you can use the segment NEC mode to find the boundary of trees. Uh, so this is a demo. You can also, for example, convert, convert the raster mass to vector data. You can also compute geometric uh, properties, for example, the size. Perimeter, uh, the, the uh, density, elongation, uh, something. You can filter the data by size. For example, you can small one, you can larger one. There are a lot of things you can do. And uh, first, let me show you how to get access to the notebook. So if you go to the same geo.gshub.org, and then on the left side, click examples. I just added this one tree mapping here. So if you click this example, you should be able to find the notebook. Gonna go through step by step. You're welcome to open this one in Google Collab. Uh, make sure that you uh turn on the GPU, otherwise it's going to be pretty slow. So you can change this one to TPU, a T4 GPU and then just click save. Then you should be able to have access to GPU. After that, you can install and comment this one to in package. I'm here, I'm going to run that on my local computer, so I'm going to show you step by step. So essentially you want to use diff map for doing mapping and then you say same geo two segmentation we can just uh, import the libraries and then we're going to create an interactive map and using the google based satellite based map so this is just a demo you are welcome to use your own satellite data this one is sent here for example in south america so it's here city we're trying to basically download a sample data set you can draw a rectangle use the drawing tools here to draw a rectangle or you can just use the sample rectangle that i provided here i recommend use this one because i'm going to use the bounding boxes to you and after that you can specify the file name and we're going to download this one uh, using zoom level 19 uh, using this uh, uh, satellite and it should only take you a couple seconds so you're going to download and then create a geotiff after that we can uh, add the raster imagery back to the map so this is what it's like so we downloaded just this small sample data it's going to segment the trees out of this uh, so what we can do here, uh, first you need to initialize the same class. This is the same Geo2 uh, based on segment NEC model 2. And we have different models, so we're going to use the last one. Use a Google Collab, it should be fine. So we can check out the model ID in here. And use the tiny, uh, small, base plus, or class. So there are four models uh, for your choosing. And since we are going to provide the bounding boxes, you need to turn this one to false. Otherwise, you're going to do base segmentation, then you can figure out which one uh, three so you want to uh, initialize the model and after that you need to set to the image so basically we are going to use this set uh, this uh, area imagery segmentation so just call the set uh, image function and that should be so then you can display the map so what we are uh, showing in here then now with this imagery we can do um matrix segmentation so you can use the bounding boxes for example you can draw any bounding boxes on the map. Uh, point to anyone you like for example i how about this one number three i want to segment or bounding boxes around that maybe another one here or another bounding boxes maybe uh about this one or maybe this one assume okay these are the two bounding boxes we want to segment the three out of that then you can just run this one since we draw the rectangle going to use the the, the bounding boxes yeah. and after that just call this function same dot predict uh, if you want to learn more you can pre, uh, press shift tab on your keyboard to up the health documentation so this one allows you to for example write the point coordinates i already covered this one uh, in the previous lecture uh, tutorial and so in this example we're just going to use bounding boxes you need to provide the what you can but we're just going to use the bounding boxes and you also need to specify the point CIS. So basically, by default, uh, you don't provide, it's going to use the raw column number. Uh, for geospatial data, we usually want to coordinate. 
just withdraw on the map. Yeah, altitude long is you. Uh, so it's EPSD forty three twenty six. After that, you can specify where you want to output the data. So save this one as mass stock diff. Uh, you can also specify the uh, the data type. Uh, this one we're going to <coughs> excuse me use uh, unsigned integer eight. So let's give it a try and see how long does it take. You see, less than one second. So now we have this mass stock diff. We can add this one back to the map and let's see if it works. I added this one to the map. Take a look. Pretty cool. So you see. I also you um the bounding boxes you can see it actually goes a little zoom a little bit uh, outside the bounding boxes. That's cool because you don't have to be perfect about the bounding boxes as long as it intersect with the object that's dominating the um, the region, then you should be able to uh, segment that. So this one here, it's not perfect because it's kind of confused with some of the three shadows. Uh, this kind of a training task, deep learning. And but this can get this easily, right? You don't have to put the boundary, put the boundary manually. If you uh, segmentation, HD. So this is how easy it is to just draw some bounding boxes. And if you have the bounding boxes from other deep learning models, for example, I have some other uh, models that output the bounding boxes. Ability, then you can provide it as a geosystem file. So I'm going to use this one hosted on GitHub. But you're welcome to change this file pass to your local file pass if they already have bounding boxes containing three bound box. And after that, we can just add all the layer, oops, all the data layer to the map. I need take a look. So here we have the um, imagery, and then we have all the yellow bounding boxes in here. Keep in mind, this is not perfect because some of those are actually. And so you need to be cautious about that. So it's all going to depend on the input bounding boxes. The bounding boxes has very high accuracy. Then the, more, the output mass from the model should be particular. But if your bounding boxes contain something else or it doesn't contain three, it's going to confuse the model. There's something you need to be. But it's automatic, so it's not going to be perfect. All right. So once we have this input data, now we can do automatic segmentation. So again, you can just call the same function. Instead of pre providing a list of coordinates, right now while we are providing this HTTP URL to the GeoJSON file, and we're going to set the output mask. Similarly, you need to specify coordinates, the data type. So just run it. A um, couple seconds, you see, uh, and we have like over, I think, uh, 200 bounding boxes in here. It only takes like two seconds. Now we have all the segmentation result. Similarly, now we can add that one to the map. So this is just a binary imagery. See this one is kind of a, uh, a little bit transparent here and the uh, no data is zero so basically it's zero and one so it's a binary image we use the opacity 0.5 and this is it so let's change the opacity like of course you will see this there's something wrong in here uh, three and also some small holes and also this is the three this is something that the bounding box is not perfect the bounding box is contain a lot of objects is very complicated. It's sometimes going to buy off them. But you can actually uh, fine tune the model. I don't have time to show you that, but uh, you can try it out and then fine tune the model. In, uh, and you initialize the model and actually provide additional parameters, a lot of things customized. So you might be able to get rid of those uh, artifacts. But uh, for the sake of time, I'll just show you. This is final output and uh, pretty decent. Uh, takes a couple seconds after that we need to clean up the result for example there are some of these holes in here some of the, they might might get some like really large object or, or very small object so this is what this one is about the post processing you can utilize this reason groups function and you can set a minimum size for example there are uh, some like very tiny objects and so the 200 basically if this is less than 200 pixels we're going to remove that and so this is no area. Uh, you need to figure out the spatial resolution easily, and then you um, you can multiply by the uh, spatial resolution square by the number of pixels. Then you get the size. So for example, if object they were detecting is a minimum size of something, you can specify the number of pixels here, and you can output the result as a vector data. Output the data as a raster imagery, basically the refine mask, and let's run this one. 
And also, um, it's going to calculate all the geometric properties because you might want to know, okay, how many trees in here? What's the total area? What's the geometric properties? So the result I'm going to return is basically a NumPy array uh, containing the mask, defined mask, and also the vector data. And actually take a look at the data. This is, for example, for all the polygons, the label. So basically going to give a unique label to each object compared to the binary is just zero and one. Now we have a unique uh, IDs. And also you have an area. So basically it's the number of pixels, the number of bounding boxes, pixels. And we have a bunch of properties here, eccentricity, um, orientation, meters, and also orientation. So these geometric properties can be useful if your object you are detecting has certain properties. For example, it's usually circular object, then the elongation should not be too big. Otherwise, it's and also, for example, the eccentricity, uh, like is zero and one. So it's close to one, this circle. If it's zero, that means it's very long. These are something that you can. And once we have the result, now we can add all the data together. So at the original imagery, uh, we're going to add the refined mass. Also, we're going to use the vector data, uh, vectorized from the refined mass. Also the bounding boxes. And after that, we add the layer manager. So this is basically the final outcome. And again, it takes us only a couple seconds to be automated. All you need is just the input bounding box. And if, when you hover your mouse, you can also see, for example, so you can turn, for example, the bounding boxes. You hover your mouse over the mask, the vector data, or the low right corner here, you can see how many, for example, label of each one. Mask. and also change the opacity of like I said it's not going to be perfect this is just a pro the demo that durable uh, you certainly need to do some post process to get the object you want have high quality input bounding boxes outputs pretty good this is the vector data so if I take this one off of course some last object is going to mix up there this still room for improvement uh, so we can add for example points and one more point in here and then maybe zero in here then it should be to remove number for this one but at least it removed the those uh, holes right with this version if fine you want to have right now the result look and you can also create a split map so if you want to compare the data side by side that as well so basically just um, adding the original imagery as a background, and then on the left side is output mask, right is the setup imagery. Also, specify the parameters. For example, I want to use F20, it's the color map, and set the no data opacity. This is yeah, this kind of map, just with a couple lines. Not bad, right? And it's up to your um, interpretations. And use other area you can bounding boxes but also some this is just a demo so that it doesn't have to be trees it can be something else buildings airplanes it can be anything so as long as you have the bounding boxes bounding based on the bounding boxes and initialize the model pointing to the geosystem data containing the bounding boxes and then you expect uh, it's very uh, has a lot of general applications thanks for other uh, object detection okay so that's what i want to show you i hope you find it useful see you in the next one yeah bye bye